Daddy nephew, it's your Aunt Janet. How are you? Yeah, anyhow, we're in town. We're here moving my best friend Fern's philodendrons. I know, I get the irony you would think she'd have ferns, but she's got philodendrons. And we're moving them because of her sciatica. You know the sciatica. Gotta bend over, she looks like a hunchback. Anyhow, we're in town. Fern can't cook because sciatica, you know, hunchback. Anyhow, she can't make breakfast. We're really close, so we thought we'd stop by. Do you mind? We thought you could make us some brunch. We know you're the big, famous internet guy now with the cooking and the mutant thing. We don't understand. Anyhow, we know you cook. And Fern, well, she can't cook because, you know, sciatica, right? You know, sciatica. She can't cook. So we thought you could make us brunch. How's that sound? You make us brunch? Yeah, we can be there in like less than an hour. How you feel about that, daddy nephew? You good with that? You make us some brunch, okay? All right, we'll be right over, okay? Less than an hour. See ya. Make sure the brunch is good, okay? We want some good brunch. We know you're on that interwebs or whatever it is, the bleeps and the bloops and the... Yeah, that stuff. We know. You dial up, whatever the fuck. Is, is this on? Are we doing it good? Okay, we'll see you soon, daddy nephew. We can't wait for the brunch. All right, bye. Great. Is that it? Mary, is that it? I'm done talking. Over and out, over, over. Is that all? Mary, what do I do over here? All right. Oh, the button. This button? Yeah, hold on. Let me see. You still, are we still there? Daddy Man. All right, so we have three brunch dishes to make and we have to make them quick. So we are gonna start right now with an amazing simple dish that you find at a lot of restaurants and you pay a ton of money for it. And trust me, it is not worth it. You can make it here so very, very quickly. It is yogurt with homemade granola and berries. How easy is that? We are gonna start with three cups of rolled oats. Don't get the steel cut oats and don't get the quick cook oats. You just want the normal, steel, or excuse me, rolled oats. You're also going to need and add into that one heaping cup of any kind of sliced nuts that you like. I am using slivered almonds and I'm using chopped up walnuts. Those are going right in the bowl. You're also gonna take one heaping cup of the sweet coconut, okay? And those, these are the coconut flakes. You can also use the shreds if that's all you can find. Let's get that right in the bowl as well. We're gonna use three quarter cups of brown sugar. I'm using a dark brown sugar. Feel free to use a light. And then we're also going to add in uh, one quarter cup of vegetable oil. And this is completely up to you. You can use one quarter cup of syrup or one quarter cup of honey. Now, if you're gonna use the syrup, I would say, again, I've said this before, go for the good stuff. Nothing wrong with Mrs. Butterworth. We love Mrs. Butterworth, but there's a lot of sugar in there that you really don't need because that natural raw uh, syrup is so delicious on its own. 
Okay, we are just gonna stir this up. Get your oven preheated to 300 degrees. Let's get this stirred up and nicely combined, making sure you get brown sugar all throughout there. That honey, get everything kind of moistened up. You don't want any of those oats to be kind of dry. All right, get it nice and stirred up there and combined. This is the longest part, is just getting it all combined and making sure everything's covered. It should already start kind of clumping up a little bit, right? And again, you've got a 300 degree oven going and you've got a baking sheet covered in foil. I would go foil here. You can try parchment paper if you want. Parchment paper might stick just a touch. I think foil is nice and heavy duty and it's gonna do the job here. All right, you've also got about a cup, cup and a quarter of any kind of dried berries that you like. I'm using dried cherries and golden raisins. Again, you can change this up. Do the taste you like. You can add a little bit of vanilla in here if you'd like. You can add some uh, sea salt if you like it in here. If you'd like your granola a little saltier, I find that the nuts have enough salt to go around. Excuse me. All right, brunch dish number one. It's almost in the oven so you can walk away and start brunch dish number two for that picky picky relative who is coming over last minute or friends or family or just for you. A lot of times you wake up kind of late, you had a late night last night, you need some breakfast, you don't know what you're going to do, you probably have a lot of this stuff already hanging out in your pantry. All right, it's nice and combined. You could tell, scrape anything off of your stirring utensil, get that incorporated back in there. This is just going right out on this cookie sheet, baking sheet. Okay, get it all in there. Get it nice and spread flat, nice and evenly. Even is important here. You don't want one side of the pan to be all cooked and the other side to still be half raw. Get the coffee out of the way. Don't leave any blank spots here, use every little inch. And this is gonna go in the oven, 300 degrees for about 45 minutes and you're gonna check it every 15 minutes and give it a nice little stir, okay? Get that all going there. All right, that's how easy that was, ta-da. It's all natural. Super healthy, really. All right, this is going in the oven. And then we are gonna start on brunch dish number two, next. Right in that oven, congrats, you got one done. Don't stress, we're gonna make, finish this and we're gonna do it right. All right, we got that granola in place now in the oven. We've stirred it once. We got about another half an hour going in there. So now we're gonna start with a sweet and savory meat that you don't find very often when you're eating out. And you can always find in your kitchen and on your brunch table with these very, very few easy steps. Okay, first thing you're gonna need is two large baking sheets. And you're gonna need one of them really well covered with tin foil, okay? Make sure you have that tin foil going up the sides because what we're making is we're making candied bacon. And bacon, as you know, has a lot of grease coming out of it when it cooks. So you don't want it going all over the pan. That's the whole point of using this tin foil. It's gonna clean up nice and easy. All right, all you need for this is, you need to push your sleeves up a little bit. Take your ring off if you got a ring on. Clean hands, coffee. All right, let's get this coffee out of the way. One big bowl, one pound of very thick cut bacon. Yes, I know, you don't get as much or uh, as many pieces when you're doing the thick cut, but you don't need as many pieces. This is nice, thick bacon. Pound is a pound, no matter how it's sliced, right? So you only have two pieces of bacon instead of six, no big deal. All right, so one pound of bacon's going in there. One big, heaping, heaping cup a brown sugar, excuse me, three quarter cup of brown sugar. Don't put a cup in there. You could put a cup in there, no big deal. And then two big, big pinches of fresh 
cracked black pepper, okay? Now, you're just gonna coat this bacon in that brown sugar. Now, you've already got your oven on 300 degrees, okay? Because you're cooking up that delicious granola. All right, so make sure this really gets coated every little inch. There should not be a single speck of brown sugar left, okay? Don't waste it. Oh, God, that smells good already. Bacon and brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can buy brown sugared bacon. And it's sort of the same, but this is delicious because it's going to get all caramelized and yummy as it's cooking. All right, so you're going to lay this out. And I like to stretch my bacon, and I like to put alternate fat end and thin end. You always got a fat end and you always got a thin end. So go fat end, fat end, fat end, fat end, like that, okay? Just helps them tuck in a little bit. And you can definitely touch the pieces, but try not to overlap. Push them all together. There we go. And this is where the thick thin kind of helps. It's got all this bacon on the pan. Awesome sauce. Okay, one more. Now, if you're having more than um, two or three people over, I would say go two pounds of bacon because this bacon really goes fast. It's so delicious. You're gonna want it and you definitely want leftovers. Get my hands a rinse here. All right, so all you're gonna do is you're gonna take that second piece of foil, lay it right on top, and then you're gonna want to take a second sheet pan, press it down. What that's gonna do is that's gonna keep the bacon from curling up uh, when it's in the oven. So you've got your oven on 300 degrees. Now this is gonna go in for approximately 20 minutes. You're gonna to wanna to check it in 20 minutes. If it's not nice and crispy and done, don't turn the heat up, don't rush it. Give it another 10 minutes or so. So at this point, it should be going almost the same amount of time as your granola that's already in the oven, right? So let's get this in the oven. There you go, you're doing well. You got two dishes almost complete and get ready for the third. All right, y'all, we are now at the final dish. And this is so, so easy. I keep saying that those first two were easy, but this one is even easier. And believe it or not, here in Chicago and probably a lot of the major cities in across America, maybe the world, this cost anywhere from 15 to $18 for this. It's so silly. We are making avocado toast and we are gonna make it basic and then we're gonna kick it up two different ways. It couldn't be more simple avocados and toast it's right there in the name of the dish avocado toast so easy y'all so what you're going to need is two avocados that's going to make two three maybe four portions depending on how heavy you like your avocado so if you like it heavy on there maybe add in a third avocado you're going to need some big flaky sea salt you're going to need some tomatoes uh pepper i have some uh everything um Seasoning here, this is what's on the everything bagels. You know, you got some sesame seeds and some caraway seeds, salt, pepper, all kinds of different little things like that. You're gonna need four pieces of toast. This is already toasted. I suggest a really thickly, thickly sliced um, wheat toast, whole grain toast, something like that. This is a pretty healthy breakfast, so you might as well get even more healthy and get your grain in. White bread doesn't seem to hold up as well as the darker breads, okay? So four pieces of toast cut nice and thick. You also are gonna need some olive oil and you're gonna need some balsamic vinegar. So first things first, avocados. Um, we've talked about avocados before, but let's talk about them one more time. Make sure they're firm. You don't want them too squishy. You definitely don't want them green. They should be this dark brown black color. Um, there's a little top knob on here and mine are actually gone because I did the test at the grocery store. That little top seed knob, which is where the stem or where the fruit hangs off, 
that should pop right out. If it doesn't pop right out, it's not quite ready yet. Again, pretty firm, but not mushy, okay? So this is really, really easy. Let me grab a spoon here. And you notice I've got my serrated knife. You're just gonna start where that top notch is and just very carefully, you're not gonna be able to go all the way through. There's a giant pit in this avocado, but just go around like that, okay? Twist. All right, there's your pit, there's no pit. Take your knife, gently, just rock it in there and give it a twist. Ta-da, see. There we go, let's get that second one done really quick. Boop, boop, boop. All the way down. All right, we got that. Give it a twist, seed, no seed. Got a little bit of brown in there, not a big deal. It means it's getting ripe. Hit it and just kind of rock and get it in there a little bit. Gently, y'all, this could cut your hand, go nice and slow. Twist, there we go. See, it kind of came out of there, that's okay. I twisted it and it's loose, so now just take the spoon there you go, boop. Do not cut yourself with the knife, that's not important, okay? All right, just take a spoon, scoop that avocado out, into the bowl, there you go. Again, take the spoon, go between the skin and all that yummy avocado, and just scoop and turn and turn, boom. All right, one more. I'm gonna leave that third half there because this bowl's getting a little full. There you go, you got all these skins, that's waste, throw it away. Yeah, let's do the fourth one. Let's live dangerously. And then all you're gonna do is you are going to take a fork. Ooh. Big fork, if you're doing more comfortable, go ahead and use like a potato masher. And you're just going to start smashing this in the bowl. Don't do it on your toast. I have paid $15 for avocado toast before. And some numb whatever in the back kitchen smushed the avocado on the bread. The bread looks horrible. It's all mushed up. It's got holes in it. Ridiculous. I did send it back, by the way. Don't be afraid to send your food back at the restaurant. I mean, don't get ridiculously picky, but if it's wrong, you can tell somebody it's wrong. You're paying for that food. All right, so I leave it kind of chunky. I like to see some chunks in there, but I would say maybe 60% smooth, 40% chunky. How about that? All right, we're gonna put just a touch of olive oil in here. Just a nice glug, a little bit of the salt, little bit of pepper and then the final little kind of stir get that all incorporated i mean how easy come on 15 dollars for this you mush some avocado joe okay all right get your bread this one we're actually going to finish because it's the last one get your bread out Take your fork, nice scoop down there. And again, well toasted. You don't want this to get mushy. Cover all that bread, get to the corners. You don't want a bite that's just bread, right? Look how pretty that is, bright green. This is so healthy. Avocados are really healthy for you. It's a good fat. There is fat in avocado, but it's a good fat. Look at that, beautiful. All right, let's do that second one. And this is why I like the chunks. I don't want it too smooth. I want to taste some, you know, nice bite while I'm chomping into this. There we go. Keep it on there. I like it heavy. If I'm paying 15 bucks for a $1.50, $2 avocado, you better be giving me a lot of avocado. Okay. Get that out of there. Just a little bit of skin. All right. And finally, you top them off. And the way you top these off, toast, crumbs everywhere. The basic way you get it at a restaurant, put your thumb, clean thumb, finger, excuse me, over the olive oil and give it a nice, slow drizzle. Okay, the olive oil really brings out the creaminess in the avocado. And I'm gonna do that on both of these. 
great. Mm, olive oil. And then you take that big coarse sea salt and you just sprinkle it on top. The salt really brings out the flavor in the avocado. Okay, I know some of you are trying to get the little salt out of your diet. My father, if he's watching, was probably cringing because I'm putting salt on something, but you do need a little bit of salt, okay? And then for that other one, again, salt, because yes, you do need a little bit of salt. Okay, there's the salt. Now what we're gonna do with this one, is we are going to cut these delicious, beautiful, tri-colored tomatoes in half. And we're gonna dig those right in there. If you got a big, big tomato, like this purple one, go ahead and cut it in quarters and get that on there. Pretty, so pretty. Let's get a yellow one on there. All right. And then you are going to take some balsamic vinegar, aged balsamic vinegar. The older um, you can get for the balsamic, the better it's gonna be. It is kind of like a wine. So, um, you know, the older it is, the more rich and flavorful it's gonna be. So we're gonna just put a tiny little drizzle of that on top of there. And that is that. Now, so you could have it plain, you could have it this way. Here's a third way, we're gonna take that plain one, and that's where these everything bagel seasoning come in. Just sprinkle that right on top, and this tastes just like an everything bagel with avocado on top. All right, so there is your avocado toast, three different ways, and how quick and easy was that? You, of course, would continue if you're doing two more, four more, six more, eight more, but see how easy that is? You can be made to order. They can be made, um, not really ahead of time, but they can definitely be made to order. You can make a bunch of them. You can assembly line them up, get a big giant platter, and man, your guests are gonna be really happy about that. Check that out. There's your avocado toast. Two different ways, three different ways if you take those seeds off there, all right? So enjoy that avocado toast. So let's go check the oven because I think it's about time to get everything out and get it out so you can see that we have about five more minutes before our guests come. So let's get it all out and I will show you how our brunch turned out, okay? See you in a second. All right, y'all, the moment we've been waiting for, the big reveal. You have your avocado toast going nice and yummy, already done on the platter, ready to serve. Let's grab that granola. Mm, and here it is, all toasty brown. Look at that, it went from that nice light brown to that dark toasted brown. Everything in there is toasted, but not overly done. And so what we're gonna do is very slowly get all those chunks of granola into the pan, or excuse me, into a bowl, as carefully as possible. You know I'm messy, whatever. You see it's in kind of nice big chunks now. So you can break those up just slightly if you want. Again, trying to get as little as possible <laughs> on the table, but again, you know me. You can always clean up the kitchen later after your guests leave or right before your guests get here. If you got a couple extra minutes. All right, let's get those chunks in there. And I think that's good enough. You know how to get stuff in a bowl. You don't need to watch me for five minutes trying to neatly get it in the bowl. All right, let's get these couple little bits off the table. And so what you're going to do is now you're going to take your dried fruit. And since I used about half that, I'm going to use about half my dried fruit. We'll save that other half for this part. And you're going to get that really well combined. All right, and this is perfect. It's on its own. It's great. A little bit of milk over this and delicious. It's like a cereal. Warm, especially you put that cold milk on it and warm. But what I like to do is I like to take a nice big bowl of Greek yogurt. Spoon just a little bit of this granola over top. Yum. Look at this pretty 
berries, or excuse me, fruit. I got the golden um, raisins and the nice cherries there. And then top it with a couple fresh fruit. I love the dried fruit and the fresh fruit together. So I'm using blueberries here. And there we go. And last but not least, grab some honey. This is organic local honey. And we've definitely talked about this before. The closer you can get to your home with the maker of this honey, the better it's gonna be for your sinuses, believe it or not, because the bees are, use, are pollinating flowers that are close to you and making the honey. And some reason, because they're pollinating with the flowers that you're breathing in, this honey is actually going to help your sinuses, believe it or not. It's a nice little tip. So I take just a nice spoonful of this local honey. This honey was made literally a mile away from our house. And there you go. You made some homemade granola over top of that Greek yogurt, all those berries, delicious. Mm, I'm gonna eat this honey. Mm -hmm. All right, it's two down. A little more coffee to get me to that bacon. Oh, last minute guest. All right, let's get this out of the way. Get that bacon on the table. You've all been waiting for this candy bacon. I know you have, I have been. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's get it. So excited. All right, be careful, because there is lots of bacon grease in here, okay? So be careful, be careful, be careful. One more time, be careful. Get that down on a trivet so we don't burn our table. Oh, I can smell it. Mm. Get this extremely hot pan out of the way. And this extremely hot top piece of foil. Oh, y'all. <laughs> All this goodness that's coming off up right there. That is caramelized brown sugar. I'm just going to kind of push it here for now. And we are going to take the spatula or excuse me, tongs, and pull out. Look at that, candied bacon, yum. Perfectly cooked, sticky, look at that, it's sticky to the tongs. There you go. And that is your yummy candy bacon. And leave that grease on there, that grease is now turned into a nice caramely syrup. Yum, yum, yum. That is it. There's your bacon, look at that. So good, candy bacon. Okay, y'all. I'm gonna go nice and slow because we got an extra couple minutes. We did it. You just made a very last minute brunch three dishes that are gonna make anybody happy for brunch. They're hearty, they're delicious. We got avocado toast three different ways. And trust me, there are many, many other ways. Think about toppings, think about avocado. You could put some uh, cilantro and some pico de gallo on there and do it a little Mexican theme. There are so many different ways you can serve up this avocado. Honey is really good on that, believe it or not. You've got your candied, bacon so delicious the meaties in your life are gonna thank you thank you thank you for that and then finally we have that whole made granola that is perfect on its own and it's also delicious with this yogurt greek yogurt and some berries on top and a little bit of honey these are three very hearty dishes that can be made with stuff you probably have in your pantry or your kitchen. If not, you can run out, spend very little money, and you've got a delicious brunch for two, four, or six. Double it up and you got enough for four, or six, or 12, or however many. But see how easy that was? You did it in just a little over an hour. Really, the active time that we were working was definitely under an hour. While everything's in that oven, you could be cleaning up the house for those last minute guests. I hope, 
I made the trilogy of brunch terror a little less scary. Congratulations, you made it. You are a brunch final girl or final final boy, excuse me, final non-binary, and you made it. So congratulations and thank you guys once again for joining me. I had such a good time. This is how we are wrapping up the Breakfast After Dark series. It is October next week and that means it's spooky month on Friday Night Frights. First of all, enjoy tonight's Friday Night Frights. We have all kinds of anthology goodness going on all night long. But please, please, please join us in October. We have some amazing events coming up. And it is going to be all sweet in this kitchen next month. It's October. We're not just doing candy, trust me. We got all kinds of fun, sweet recipes coming up. Please enjoy your final Breakfast After Dark brunch of terror <laughs> and i will see you again next week thank you guys on behalf of me on behalf of wally and hubs and death kitty please enjoy your brunch enjoy the rest of friday night frights and thank you so much for joining us i will see you again next week y'all enjoy see you later